Heinegger Icon is manufactured from high quality steels to a strict ISO 9001-2000 quality system in our factory in Switzerland. The Icon has three double row heavy duty ball bearings and 14 teeth cogs to make it run smooth. The Icon is completely rebuildable with all parts being available either singularly or in kit form. When used with Heinegger combs and cutters, the Icon is the safest handpiece on the market. With Heinegger combs and cutters at any thickness, set at any lead length, there is always a smooth cutting edge over its length with no protruding or jagged edges, thus eliminating mechanical lockups. It also improves the cut, giving a smooth cutting edge. Heinegger back up the Icon with a factory nine month conditional warranty and comes complete with a ferrule, screwdriver and extensive manual. Like anything mechanical, lubrication is critical to life and heat. If you lubricate your Icon correctly, it will last far longer and run smoother. At the beginning of work and at every cutter change, put five drops of oil into the centre post cup before putting the cutter on. The cup and post are the heart of the handpiece. Oiling through the hole without the cutter on allows the cup to come away from the post and oil will sit in the cup. Put the cutter on. Oil inside the ferrule. Squirting the oil onto the side of the ferrule. This lubricates the movement of the ferrule to the short tube and the bearing surface between the worm drive and the back joint. Give the cogs a good squirt. Oil the fork ball race. Oil the tension pin cup and the comb and cutter. You can't over oil a handpiece. Do it every cutter change and the handpiece will last far longer and run smoother. When the handpiece is new and all components are tight, change cutters and oil it more often to run it in. Once a week, unscrew the tension nut and take out the tension sleeve. Clean out the old grease from inside the tension sleeve. Core to fill the tension sleeve with new grease. We use Castrol UltraTac, but any good quality grease will do. Clean inside the tension nut bushing screw and the thread on the outside, and the thread inside the tension nut. Lightly oil the threads in the bushing screw and inside the tension nut and put a bit of oil inside the tension pin cup. Uh, replace the tension pin, the sleeve and the tension nut. Once a week take out the chicken feet by turning them 90 degrees to the fork and pull them out. After giving the chicken feet and the fork a good clean Put new grease on the fork where the chicken feet fit and push the chicken feet back into place. The back joint caps hold the grease that lubricate the pivot point between the inner and outer back half joints. These caps need filling with grease monthly. To fill the caps, take off the spring, clean the old grease from the caps and replace it. All the instructions are well written inside the user manual. To replace the bearings, we recommend that you use a Heinegger bearing tool kit. We also need a solid piece of wood, nylon hammer, a cog spanner, plenty of clean rag and some oil. 
Unscrew the fork safety screw and take out the fork and ball. With the ferrule being removed already, unscrew the worm drive. Remove the back joint from the barrel. Remove the back joint springs, caps and cover. Remove the seal, then the circlip from inside your barrel with the circlip pliers that come in your bearing tool kit. Place the punch down the barrel into the recess in the middle of the crankhead and knock out the crankshaft. Knock out the bearings from the inner and outer back joint half. Knock the bearings off the crankshaft with your tool from your kit. Now separate all the old parts from the new in your bearing kit. Clean all parts thoroughly. Time spent doing this will save you time later. Clean every groove, hole and bearing seat thoroughly. Oil up the bearing seat on the crankshaft and then place the distance washer, that's the flat one, on the crank then the front bearing. With the crank on a solid piece of wood, knock the front bearing home with the tool provided. Do the same with the outer back half joint. Oil inside the barrel, then place the crank in the barrel. Use the tool provided to knock the bearing home. Place the wave washer 
that's the wobbly one, into the barrel and then the bush. If the bush is tight, knock it lightly with a screwdriver until it slides down the barrel. Then put the sir clip inside the barrel. The sir clip must be expanded in the groove perfectly. It will, it will if you have cleaned the groove properly. Place the tool at the end of the barrel and then knock it lightly until the circlet pops into its seat. Check the inner back joint half turns freely with the circlet. Put the cover with the tongue over the outlet, outer back half joint. With new grease in the caps, Put the back half joint together. The seal must go into the inner back half joint the correct way. The side with the two lips goes to the cogs. Slide it halfway up the inner back joint half. Slide the joint into the barrel, then press the seal home. Once the seal is home, push the joint right into the barrel and put the cog on. Now that we have reconditioned the bearings in your handpiece, you will have a run-in period. Use light tension, change your cutters regularly and use plenty of oil. Never be afraid to recondition your handpiece. Right. Rebuilding your handpiece from the front end. Take off the centre post lock nut and screw out the post. Then place the cup over the hole and knock them out. Remove the chicken feet and clean up the fork. Separate the old parts from the new. Right, place the tension pin retaining spring on the cup and put, the, put it in the fork. Ensure that the slope on the cup face is angled directly to the ball race at the end of the fork. Then knock it. Place the centre post cup into the fork and gently knock in position. Screw the new centre post into place. Leave the lock nut off or loose at the moment. Put grease on all contact parts. Put grease where the chicken feet slide. Into the tension pin cup, into the centre post cup. Put grease into the ball race. And quarter fill the tension sleeve with grease. 
put a small amount of grease into the, each end of the ball. Sit the ball on your finger with the flat side up. The ball has a flat and a sharp side. The flat side faces the cogs. Slide the barrel over your finger. With the crank pin towards you, put the crank pin into the ball. With the ball turned on the bottom of the barrel, fit the fork into the barrel and over the ball. Replace the fork safety screw. Slide the pointy end of the tension pin up into the barrel and then put the ball on the end of the tension pin retaining spring. Replace tension sleeve and push the tension pin into the tension retaining spring. Make sure the sleeve slides very easily up and down. Add oil to keep it and keep it oiled. Oil the tension threads. Replace tension nut. <coughs> right. Screw on a comb. Put on a three mil cutter. With the ferrule in place, screw the tension until the weight of the handpiece is held on the tension nut like this. The post guide has two steps in it. Adjusting the centre post will set the handpiece. With the post gauge, in the oil hole with the bottom step resting against with the bottom step on the fork ball race. The other step will be close to the front of the oil hole. Adjust the post up and down until the two step rock into, into the front of the oil hole whilst the bottom step is on the fork, on the front of the fork ball race. Always check the post setting with correct tension. Once you have the centre post, set lock on the tension hard screw on the centre post lock nut and lock it up. Now you have set the post with a 3mm thick cutter and the handpiece will cut with any thickness cutter. Only adjust the new post, don't adjust any post that has been used for a week or more.